Okay. So let's have a quick recap what we have discussed in the last session. In the last session, we have just discussed about the EWS, what is EWS, what are the services which we are going to cover in this particular training. And if you are going to pay for this course, what you are getting it from ourselves. So this is what we have discussed in previous session. In today's session, we are going to first learn about how we can create our AWS account. The first thing we are going to learn here is how we can create our AWS account. But before starting of this particular topic, anyone have any question, you can please raise your hand. If you have any question regarding anything, you can please raise your hand. Yes, there is really. Hi. So once you've done the payment, where can you see the recordings in the logic lab the app? You can see our you can see your recordings in app also you can see in your website also now website let me just tell you if you after login of the website you'll find one option called dashboard here okay if you click on dashboard on right side sorry on not right left side you will see something called active courses okay, okay. after click on dashboard you will see some active courses on left side there you will see your courses whichever for which you have made the payment or if you want to use mobile app you scroll down our website here we have our mobile app so for android also even for ios so okay once you log into app should we log in using any credentials or anything the same credential which you are logging by using email id okay. same one the one which are key creating your account before making the payment. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. I'm sharing my app link in the chat box also for you guys. This is for Android I have shared and now I'm sharing for iOS also. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I can. Uh, so uh, actually, I have uh, used the AWS, uh, you know, the trial version for S3 buckets while I was using Snowflake. So can I kind of continue that same trial account for this uh, AWS as well, or do I? When you have uh, when you have created that account, sorry. Uh, it was like uh, fifteen days ago. Uh, yes, definitely. Yes, yes, you can use it because okay. whenever you are creating an account, you will get a free quota for one year. Okay. okay. And every per month we have some free quota. So that one, if you might be remember the previous session, I have shown you one link also. Yes, 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 yes. So okay. you can use the same one in that one. You're getting the quota for one year and for every month that is going to be renewed. On first of every month, it is going to be renewed. Okay. Okay. okay? So yes, you can use the same one. And uh, one more like uh, do do I do we get also like some kind of uh, uh, notepad notes or an instructions in the notepad uh, for the session. PPTs. Or, yeah, we okay. Yes, okay. Thanks. These PPTs which I'm going to use, you will get these PPTs. Okay. There are total 94 PPTs are there. Till 91 PPTs we are learning. These two PPTs are project. And then in the last one, you will get quiz and sample results. Okay. Here are the quizzes which you will get. Okay, you will get sample resumes, interview questions, Linux commands, how to create resume, dump, document, other document things also. Okay, but yes, on daily basis, we are going to upload these people. Yes, I. Yes, sir. Yes, Radhika. Hello. Yes, Radhika. Uh, yeah. Do you provide any interviews? Like, uh, you, you do you have any tie up with any companies? 
no we don't have any tie up with any companies we have whenever we are getting the opportunities we'll share with our students in our telegram group okay and only our paid candidates can apply for this one if any other is applying it they are not going to select because whatever we are sharing it that is selected for only for our paid candidates okay uh, it's for uh, both the freshers and the experienced candidates yes right? we will we'll share both type of job details okay and uh, after completing this session like mm. how many years of experience we can put in our resume 2 to 2 and a half years of experience just if you go with aws okay okay and, yeah and uh, this role is completely for solution architect right correct uh, so like in generally under team size there will be one solution architect Uh, if you have an no, idea, no, definitely multiple. We have depend on the client size. Okay, so the uh, it will not cover any CISAPS administration topics. It no. is completely different. Correct. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, Ankit. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, Ankit. Actually, I am working in the non IT field as recruit. Mm. So I want to shift my career to the IT. That's why I'm uh, following uh, logitech uh, mean courses. Earlier mm. I went through Python with Sunil. Uh, mm. I successfully completed, and I have the course content also purchased. I'm happy that I learned the course. So um, I want to learn uh, AWS also for a better uh, career. Uh, So I have doubt, uh, Ankit, that uh, I see that uh, AWS DevOps and AWS in your website. So uh, actually, DevOps is different course, right? Mm -hmm. Mean AWS DevOps means both the courses will be teach. No, no. In AWS DevOps, we are not going to teach any AWS services. In AWS DevOps, we are learning only DevOps tools on AWS platform. That's all. You are not going to learn any AWS service in AWS DevOps. If I want okay. to after learning this uh, AWS, if I want to learn AWS DevOps, uh, that's the next step. Next step. Uh, after first step is you need to learn AWS service. Next step is you need to learn AWS DevOps. Okay. Okay. After this one, if I want, if you have any DevOps courses, also I mean any. We we'll definitely update in our group. Yeah, we can. I can learn. Sure, we'll update in group. Thank you, Ankit. Yes, Ravindra. Yes, Ravindra. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm working in as a network network administrator. So some of the reputed company. So I want to uh, go for the cloud side. So in that case, I could just I uh, choose the AWS. So how it will be related to my networking career? This in area. AWS, we have some service called VPC. Yeah, I hear that. That is related with your networking part. Only that part only related to the networking, right? Yes, that so, particular service. So how much it is useful for networking careers in the future? This VPC. Right. No VPC is a very advanced service and one of the important service. Without VPC in the cloud platforms, we can't do anything. You can't okay. create virtual machines without VPC. Okay. VPC is okay. very important thing, and in VPC we are meant the security feature. Whichever we are maintaining, we are maintaining under a service called VPC. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. So okay. VPC is one of the very important service we have. Okay, so it I think it will be boost to the networking uh, uh, resume for this, if I can show this. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Pakya, how you can unmute? Hello. Yeah, I have uh, two questions. One is, uh, what is difference between sysops? Like, what does sysops contain? and the previous question was about devops so what is exactly devops is it more like a platform or is it more like a, 
first of all yeah. do go with mm-hmm. one by one look that it will be easy for me to answer it will be easy for you to understand sure okay we'll go with one by one insist mm-hmm. of administrator and if you talk about this one i'll show at this one architect associate there are services are different Mm-hmm. that one the services are different in architect associate services are different there is no matching mm-hmm. services like if i talk about in developers and in associate one in architect so there are two services which are matching ec2 and s3 other than that mm-hmm. no services are matching but in sys of administrator there is no services which are related with architect associate so mm-hmm. those services are very and in this service are very that is why AWS has more than 200 services. Mm-hmm. Even I'm saying might be less than that, might more than 200 services they have, and that is why for every service they have created a different different role. That is okay. one of the role which we are learning. Oh, okay. Okay. Now coming to DevOps. DevOps is not one tool. DevOps is combination of multiple tools. DevOps is actually a process. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that process which you are going to learn under DevOps training with the help of multiple tools which we have at Inmar. Oh, okay, it's a process. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. A few more questions. Yes, Rajesh. hi uh, so uh, in this uh, you are cover- covering rds service also like rds also is going yes. to cover as part of course content you can check the course content yeah yeah because yesterday while you show 27 uh, services in that rds is not there that's why question is there any course content okay and one more question like uh, so um, there are different uh, services for the storage network and all these things right so in the real environment so for uh, each major services like uh, storage network separate uh, team uh, will be there or uh, you know as a aws uh, uh, administrator uh, each of the service uh, aws person also need to work only aws person need to work Definitely, AWS person will work on AWS services. Okay, not like uh, as uh, general. We have a system administrator, network, and storage related administrators uh, separate, right? No. So like that uh, for AWS also separate. Uh, uh, you know, specialization for each service there is a specialization we have. A person needs to work on that particular service, and you can see here RDS is mentioned. Yes, okay. it's twenty seven one which I'm showing you. Okay, and uh, I know uh, for RDS service, uh, I need to get specialization. Means uh, I need to do professional course for service called Redshift. Okay, Redshift. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yes, I get it. Uh, I think actually, uh, so I just wanted to understand uh, what extent the AWS architect solution, the the course, and also the AWS thing that I have to learn in order to kind of coordinate with Snowflake. Basically, I have used the S3 buckets, IAM, and the few other features in AWS. While in the interview, basically they're asking for a combination of Snowflake and Snowflake and AWS. So, you have any idea on how extent that is? You know. I have, have start learning snowflakes few years back, but I stopped there. I don't have much information. Right? Okay. But okay. basic information has it that you said that you are using S three buckets. That is what information I have because in with snowflakes they are using S three buckets. True. That Correct. much I don't have much information about that. Okay. Yeah, I was just reading some documentation when I start learning it. that information i got only little bit not much okay okay yes shake you can unmute yes shake you can unmute yourself 
Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, I was talking on mute. Uh, yeah. So just a quick one actually. Uh, I think I joined five ten minutes late, uh, and I've noted a couple of points like uh, VPS. Uh, without VPS, VM cannot be created and all that stuff. So I don't. I don't think so. We have gone much ahead. Okay. As right now, we are not starting. Definitely, slowly, slowly, we'll move forward. Not okay, on okay, day fine, fine. two or day one or day three. We are not going to definitely jump to a service called VPC. Okay, fine, fine. No worries, no worries. Thanks, thanks. You can slowly, go. Slowly, slowly, we are moving. Yes. Yeah, yeah, fine. No worries. Okay. Okay. So we'll start learning about how we can create our AWS. To create your AWS account, you need to go to this particular link, the link which I have shown you in the above, or you can just search on Google also, aws.amazon.com. Here we are not getting any option to sign up, so we can click on sign in. And when we click on sign in, in the below, we'll get an option to create our, so here yeah. I am. Create a new AWS. So when you click on create a new AWS account, you need to first enter your email ID. It can be any email ID or any personal email ID. Don't use your official email IDs. Any personal email ID you can use here. And then you can enter your password. And after that, you can again enter your Password just to confirm your password. After entering of the password, you need to enter your AWS account. And AWS account name all it is mandatory to be unique globally. It is mandatory. So you need to get a unique account name for you. So first you need to enter these four details email ID, password, confirm password, and AWS account. Are there any rules to set our password? Yes, we have. What are those? We'll discuss it. So after entering all these details, you need to click on continue. Now here are the rules which you need to follow for your password. Uppercase, lowercase, number, null alphanumeric characters. Out of these four things, you need to use at least three things, at least three. And your password must be minimum eight characters long. Minimum eight characters long password you need to enter with three things upper, lower, number, or alphanumeric. And here I have already mentioned AWS account name must be unique. When you click on continue, you will come to the step two. In step two, it is asking for which type of plan you want to select. Business plan or personal. We are not going to do any business. So we are just for our learning purpose, we need to use. So we are going to use an option called personal here. After entering, selecting the personal option, you need to enter your full name your phone number, your country, your address, and then in the end, your postal code. Postal code means PIN code. And then check the checkbox, or if you want to read their terms and conditions, you can read that also. And on left side, you can see here, the three things which we have discussed in our previous session. Free tier offer, always free, 12 months free, or for trial fee. And then click on continue. 
Once you click on continue, you need to enter your card details. Don't worry, it's completely secure. Yeah, just you need to enter your card details, card number, expiry date, card holder name, CV. One important point here. AWS does not support rupee card. Is supporting in India Visa and Mastercard. In India, those have Rupee card. AWS does not support Rupee card. And you can enter your debit card also. Or you can enter your credit card also. And they are going to deduct two rupees from your account just to validate your card. And after three to five days you will get those two rupees refund in your account. Maximum three to five working days, it is three days they are taking, but before that you will get your two rupees back. And you need to enter your card number, make sure the card is enabled with international transactions. By default in India, international transactions are disabled by default for every account. You need to enable those international transactions in your card by contacting your bank or you can check their mobile app. In their mobile app, we have an option to enable that international transactions. And you just need to set a limit of 10 rupees just only because they need to deduct two rupees. To set a limit of 10 rupees. And once your card is validated, you can even disable that after that. Now, next, click on verify and continue. And now here it is asking for an OTP, two rupees, which they are going to deduct. Enter your OTP and then click on. So, once you click on submit, you need to validate your mobile number also. And there are two options to validate your mobile number by text message or by call. So, select your country code first, enter your mobile number, enter the security checks, and then Use click on the button. You need to use send message or voice call. They will call you. And here you will get an OTP. That particular OTP you need to enter here, which you get by using mobile, so by using SMS or call in your mobile. And then click on continue. Once you click on continue, here it is asking us to select a support plan. Which type of support plan you need to select? Always go with a free plan. Don't go with developer support or business support. These support providing by the AWS. In real time, client wants support. We don't want any support from AWS. So always select free plan and then click on complete sign up. Once you complete sign up, you will come to this particular page. Congratulations. And go to AWS management console. And here you can select your role. And I'm interested in that particular you can say. Here you will get AWS architect associate role. And the area, you can select any area. It doesn't make any difference. You can select anything and then click on. Once you click on submit, it sometimes your account will active in two minutes. Sometimes it will take near about two to three hours also to activate your account. So once your account is activated, you can log in and this is how your account is going to and then you can start working on AWS 
services might be while practice you get some error message sometimes they need some verification from their side also so in your when you log into your account you will get a pop up from their side they need more verification in that particular case you need to drop an email to them the email id i don't remember right now but the pop up which you are getting it in that one the email id is mentioned by either but that is very rare case you need to send an email on very rare case most of the time we don't require to send any email to either so this is what we have for aws account any question anyone have please raise your hand Yes, power. Uh, <clears throat> while creating this AWS account, we got two options for root user and I am an user. And that is for login like... power. That is for not creating an account. Okay. For creating an account, you will not get any option root or I am user. That option you are getting when you try to log into your account. You and need to click which we have created. Is it a root user or it I am user? I'll, I'll come to that point. You need to click on create a new account. Yes. After login, you need to select root user, then enter email ID and password. You the account which you are going to create that is root user. What is I am user? We'll learn in our upcoming sessions. That is a sub one of our AWS service we have. I am user. Okay. Sure. Yeah. For root user, you can call it up head, head, and then these are the child users which we are creating. I am users under our one user. Okay. So okay. Practically, we learn how to create I am users, how to use X, I am that I am user. Because if you see here, when I'm selecting I am user, it is not asking for email ID, it is asking for account ID. Okay. okay, so we'll learn that in our session. And now let me log into my AWS. See, here, this is how it looked like for me. For you, it is not showing anything in recently used. Because you didn't use anything for me, it is showing some recently used services also because I'm using these services for my training session. Yes, Suresh. Uh, so, hi, Ankit. Uh, so, actually, I made this account a one or two year ago, actually. Mm. So I just set it to passwords. Can I use the same account? If you use the same account, you will get a bill. Because oh, the free, you will get a bill for that. Because the free quota is only for one year. Okay. So better to create a new account. Okay, with the new email, new email ID, right? Correct. Okay. Yes, Ravinder. Yeah, uh, I have created a free entire account and I use it for us. Uh, uh, 15 to 20 days, I created VPC and I left that same, uh, uh, left what, uh, how it is there. So after some days, I got a uh, bill for 500 rupees. So that mm. reason, because of that, uh, I have created VPC and I uh, left uh, uh, the same thing. I haven't uh, disconnected. No, VPC anything. is completely free. The creation of VPC is not chargeable. VPC and subnets are free. Maybe I created an internet gateway and this uh, internet part. gateway is also free. But I don't know. Route table is also free. Mm -hmm. Did you create NAT gateway? Yeah, I created NAT gateway. NAT gateway is chargeable. Okay. NAT gateway you can't leave as it is. NAT gateway is the one which is chargeable because for NAT gateway we need an elastic IP. An mm -hmm. elastic IP is chargeable. Okay. So if I create okay. a NAT gateway, then I have to go remove it immediately after work. So then after our practice, tell that why the reason is we need elastic IP. And if your elastic IP is in idle state, 
it is chargeable if your mm -hmm. elastic ip is in use it is mm -hmm. not chargeable okay okay so okay, good. that might be the reason you are getting a bill from okay so later i okay. i delete uh, later i'll remove that elastic ips everything so I, then i didn't receive it and after that i didn't receive any bills no. make sure after a practice you are going to delete all those things yeah sure Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I just want to know what the uh, how much uh, network is uh, used for the VPC. How much you must know? You, even if you don't know anything, that is okay. For VPC in networking. If you don't know anything, that's what we are going to teach Amit. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we'll start learning about our first AWS service after creation of our AWS account. We are going to learn about our first service called EC2. What is EC2? EC2 stands for Amazon Elastic compute cloud. What is this EC2 service? EC2 service is help us to create virtual servers on AWS infrastructure. What is server? Server is like a, like a computer. Let's take an example here. I have my computer. This is my laptop. I want a same type of computer to be created in Amazon cloud. Can I create a same computer there? Yes, I can create a same computer in Amazon Cloud also. And creating a same computer in Amazon Cloud, we are creating under a service called EC2. Here we have, it is showing me in recently used, but for you guys, it is not showing you in recently used. So you guys need to search here, or EC2. Now, which type of operating system in support in Amazon? Here are the full list of operating system it support in Amazon. Amazon Linux, Ubuntu, Windows, Red Hat, Oracle Linux, even Mac also is supported. Debian, CentOS, there are a lot of types of operating system. It is supporting us to create our computer in Amazon. And first, I'm going to show you how we can create a Windows EC2 machine. It means I'm going to create a Windows computer in cloud. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to that particular cloud by using my local machine. So just creating our work is not going to over. Even after creation, we need to connect to our computer also, the computer which I'm going to create in Amazon Cloud. First of all, to create a machine, the EC2 machine, we need to select a region. Region means in which particular data center I need to create this particular EC2 machine. Here I can select open your account. If you see on the right side, here I'm getting is N Virginia. What is this N Virginia? N Virginia is the region and it is showing me by default in my account. So first of all, what I need, I need to change the region. You can select any region, whichever is your nearest region, you can select any region. So for me, I'm selecting Mumbai. And in my account, you are able to see Hong Kong, Hyderabad, Mumbai, lot of regions you are able to see. here. So I'm just going with Mumbai. So I've selected Mumbai region. 
it means the ec2 machine the computer which i'm going to create i'm going to create in mumbai region data set for your practice purpose you can select any of the region whichever you want to select and now search ec2 service so here i'm searching EC2. virtual servers in the cloud click on instance whatever the steps i am going to follow now each and every single step is mentioned in my ppt i can directly launch an instance here also or i can go to instance first i'll go to instance yeah. it is showing me no matching instance found because i don't have any machine right now active in my aws account i need to create a machine and whenever we are purchasing any computer few things we are always seeing it what cpu ram hard disk and operating system these four things we are always seeing it whenever we are purchasing any computer same way to create this particular computer in aws machine this ec2 machine we need to select these four things without these four things it is impossible to create our ec2 machine so click on launch this to create this machine there are few steps we need to follow the first step is we need to give the name to our machine and it can be any name you can give it's not mandatory to give the unique name you can give any name to this particular machine and i am giving the machine name as windows hyphen 120 scroll down so first step we have completed we have given the second step second step is we need to select ami ami stands for amazon machine image in our daily life we are calling it as operating system in aws it is called as ami so which one we need to select we have discussed it we need to select windows based operating system so i am selecting emi as windows yeah. so i have selected as windows one under windows also whatever the types we are providing us we are getting it 2022 2019 these are not windows 10 or windows 11 like this these are server windows it's i am getting 2022 this i'll just go with the default one and this one also you can see here the one which i have selected is coming under free tier so make sure you are going to select the free tier eligible one if you are selecting any other you will get a bill for that so i am just going with free tier one so how many steps we have completed two steps we have given the name we have select our operating system as windows server 2022 yes scroll down Right. now we have discussed it to create any machine we need cpu ram hard disk operating system operating system we have selected now i am going to select cpu and to select cpu and ram i need to select 
instance type and here i am getting the all instance type see their names t2.micro t2.small t2.medium you can scroll on last see here the name m5ad.24x large m5ad.16x large like these are the names of my instance type but what we can select with this with this we can select cpu and ram with these types we can select cpu and ram and how i get information how much cpu and ram we are getting it see here this is ram and this much of cpu we are getting. one cpu one gb of ram we are getting. and what is it type e2 dot micro and this one is also coming under CPU. We have other also like I'll go to compare instance type. Here I'm getting full list. You can go to multiple pages. You will get here. Like here we have T3 large, two C, sorry. T3 large, 2 CPU, 8 GB. So these types we need to select in real time as per our client requirement and whatever the type we are selecting based on that particular type, we are getting CPU and RAM. And you always find these types in your AWS account and we always need to select these types as per our client requirement but right now i am using which one t2 dot micro so how much cpu we are getting one how much ram we are getting it one and this is sufficient to create a small computer in cloud platform i'll show you one more thing In previous session, we have discussed something here. This free tier details, we have seen it. And here we have seen the first service called EC2, 750 hours per month quota we are getting. It. And under this 750 hours for Windows, 750 hours for Linux. I, they have mentioned T2 micro or T3 micro. In few of the regions, we have T2 micro coming under fill tier. In few of the regions, we have T3 micro for few regions. Here. So which one I am selecting? T2 dot micro. This coming under free tier because I am using Mumbai. So we have completed three steps. Name, operating system, CPU and RAM we have selected as instance type. Next step is we need to create key pair. What is this key pair? Key pair is like a password to us. It's like a password to connect to this particular machine. We need some password. Definitely, yes. Key pair is working as a password for me. This key pair is going to help us to generate password to connect to this particular machine. What without this particular key pair, we can't generate the password. So click on create new key pair. Give the name of your key pair. 
Keep your name can be any name. I am giving as this name. Windows 124 key I am giving. And type needs to be PEM here. Don't select PPK. PPK will discuss in tomorrow's session. But right now you need to select PEM. Create keep here. So this key and here I'm getting that particular key. With the help of this particular key, I can generate the password. So I'm just going to put this key here in my folder 124. Scroll down. So we have selected the instance type. We have created a new key pair. And when you give the key pair name, special characters does not work in that key pair. Extension needs to be dot pem. Get new key pair. Next thing, scroll down. Next here, we are getting it network settings. I'm not going to disturb my network setting. I'm going as it is. I'm using a default VPC. Here we have a subnet. I'm using default. Right now, we are not going to learn about anything about these things. In our upcoming session, we are going to discuss about these network settings also, but we'll discuss one important point here. What is that important point? To connect any Windows machine, it is mandatory to enable a port number called RTP. To connect any Windows machine, it is mandatory. If we are not going to allow this particular port number, it is impossible to connect to our Windows machine. And you can see here in my AWS account, it is by default enabled by the AWS. Allow RDP. They have automatically enabled the RDP port number. And what they are creating here? They are creating a security group. And this is the name of my security group. By default, they are doing. If you want to change, we can change also. How to change, we'll discuss in upcoming session. The system is going to create a new security group with allow port as RDP port. Why RDP port is required to connect our Windows machine. In our upcoming session, we'll discuss more things about security group. But before that, I need to ask one question. You can drop in the chat box your answer. Anyone knows the port number for RDP? Drop me in the chat box, RDP port number. Correct answer is double three eight nine. Double three eight nine is the port number. Or RDP. You need to remember this port number, guys. If you don't know, please note down somewhere. I need to remember this port number, RDP port. This one is mandatory, unable to connect our Windows machine. Now, what is actually security group? A security group is just help us to set our firewall rules that which person can connect to this particular machine or which person can connect or which ports we need to enable all those things we are going to manage in security group. slowly slowly in our upcoming session we'll discuss more things about security security group is one of the very important thing and it is one type of security feature we have to create our ec2 machines 
Now here I am getting it storage. Storage means hard disk. And by default, how much quota they are giving me? 30 GB of quota they are giving me to create my EC2 machine. And 30 GB is coming also coming under your free tier. So 30 GB is free. If you want to increase, you can increase also. And this is 30 GB is like a C drive to us, like in our Windows machine. In Windows machine, we have C drive, then we have D drive. So this one is something like C drive to us. And then in the last, we have an option called advanced details. Regarding advanced details, we are not going to discuss anything for right now. We'll discuss in our upcoming session. So let's have a quick recap what we have done till now. We have given the name to our EC2 machine. We have selected our operating system as a Windows one. We have selected our instance type as E2 micro where we are getting CPU and RAM. And then we have created our key pair, which help us to generate our password. And then by default system has enabled a port number RD. We are not disturbing anything in network settings for right now. In our upcoming session, we'll discuss more about network settings. And then we have getting it 30 GB of storage. We are getting. And here we have instance type. In instance type, we have selected CPU and RAM. With the help of instance type, we are selecting CPU and RAM. How much CPU and RAM you require for that particular EC2 machine? So we are selecting T2. These are the names, guys. These are the naming convention, t2.micro, you will whatever the names you are about. These are the namings. Don't worry about the namings, what they are naming convention they are using. Now, how many machines I require? Only one machine. This is the summary we can see on right side. And here we have a no count also how many machines I can create. I'm just giving us one because I need to create one machine. And here also I can see the details, whatever we have selected, PMI, instance type, firewall, storage. So here also we are able to see those details. Now in the end, what we need to do, Click on launch configuration. System start creating my EC2 machine. Click on instance. System has created our EC2 machine, but what is its state? The state is showing us as Take some time to start running our and now it's start. Now, here is my instance ID, the EC2 machine which I have created. Here I'm able to see the instance. Here I'm getting some other details about my EC2 machine. At what date and time when we have launched this particular C2 machine, we are able to see. Now, next step is just creating of our EC2 machine. Our task is completed. No. What is the next thing? We need to connect to this particular EC2 machine. 
machine. How we can connect to this EC2 machine? Select the EC2 machine and click on connect. Select the EC2 machine and here we have an option called So click on, after click on connect, go to RDP client. We have three tabs here, session manager, RDP client, EC2, serial console, go with, scroll down. Note down your public DNS name. I'm not. Our username administrator. And here we have a password. We need to generate password. How can I generate password? I can generate the password with the help of that particular temp file which we have generated, a key pair. The key pair which we have generated with the help of this key pair, I can generate a password. Now, click on get password. When I click on get password, it is asking me to upload this private key, to upload this particular key, Windows 124 key. This is batch 118, go to batch 124, here I'm selecting, open, decrypt, password, here I'm getting a password. So I got all three things which are help us to connect to our so we have generated our password. Now open remote desktop connection. Is there any software which we need to download? No. I don't need to download this remote desktop connection. In Windows machine by default you have. See here. When you just search RE, here you are good. In your Windows machine. Click on that. It is asking for computer. You need to enter this. Done. Click on show options. Enter your username. So in computer, we have enter our public DNS and we have entered our username also. Now I'm going to click on connect. Click on connect. Now it is asking for password. So here is my password. Oh. Yes. And so we are able to create our EC2 machine and we are able to connect to our EC2 machine. So this computer we have created and we are able to connect to this particular computer which we have created in Amazon servers in Mumbai location. Now, so we have created start taking some time to load our machine and then we can, we are connected. If you want to check details, we can check the details also. Click on yes.
this PC, right click, properties, see here, one GB of RAM I'm getting here, and hard disk size, 29.9 GB they are providing. GB are selected, but we are getting 29.9 GB from yes. This is how we can create EC2 machines and we can connect to our C2 machine with the help of remote desktop connection. And by default, remote desktop connection is there in your Windows machine. If anyone have any question regarding this, please raise your hand. So this is what we have learned here. I need to show you one more important thing. Let's have quick questions, then I'll show you. Yes, Harshad. Am I audible, Ankit? Yes. So my doubt is that uh, when you open the uh, uh, window for the t2.micro, so there has been written like uh, Red Hat will charge will be 0.02 dollar so say will after cost. free quota okay it's a charge after free quota right. okay fine thank you per month you are getting 750 hours let's say example you have consumed 750 hours okay. after that definitely they charge you for that particular month also yes okay and 750 hours you are getting let's say example you have created two machines mm -hmm. it means the 750 hours is going to divide into two into two yeah Right now, I've created one machine, so I'm just getting for one. Hmm. If I get two machines, so 70 hours divided into two. Okay. Okay. Yeah, got it. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ankit. Yes, thank you, you can unmute. Yeah, Venkat, I'm not able to hear you. Hi, Ankit. I'm stuck here uh, at the username. Uh, after entering the DNS, uh, what are we supposed to enter for the username? Are you practicing parallel, Usha? Yeah, yeah. That's the reason you're stuck. Oh, okay, okay. Don't do this thing. When you all get the video, watch the video carefully, then practice mm -hmm. it. Okay? Oh, That's the okay. reason. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So don't practice parallelly because might be right, right now this is very basic thing we are learning. But let's take example in future in our upcoming days we are learning a very important topic and might be you miss that particular point that can be your interview question and that yeah. become your a job you might be get or you are not getting a job because of that particular interview question it can be possible. Isha. So when you are in mm -hmm. this session give your hundred percent. Don't okay. parallelly practice. Not just for Usha, this is for all of you guys. Okay. okay. So okay. watch yeah. the video. If you get stuck again, Usha, drop me an email with screenshot. Um, sure. Yeah. Do you Thank have you. my email ID? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Netish. Uh yes, hi Ankit. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, okay, so um, while selecting instance type, I saw T two dot micro that is free mm. tier, but below that I can see uh, it's certain on demand Linux pricing and on demand window pricing. What is that exactly? Means you can demand also. Here we have, but you can you select multiple also. Let me just show you that also where we are getting instance type. Here I'm getting all instance type. See here, here I'm getting where we are able to see exit when you please let me know. On demands also we can we can demand exit that is called on demand instances. We can demand as per our own requirement also from AWS. That is like something in, called on demand. Okay, like in T2 micro, I'm getting one CPU, one GB memory, right? Mm -hmm. So right. and that is a window instance uh, for window I am selecting. So correct. On demand like. Uh, it's extra i'm asking or what is that you can we can't create our own instance type let's say example we have some unique requirement 
in that okay. case we can ask aws team they can create specific instance types for us that is on demand uh okay is it clear or i think you are still in confusion a little bit okay what is the normal meaning of on demand just forget about aws what is the meaning of on demand whatever we need extra uh, that is in demand like uh, that as per my requirement if i need something else that is what is the meaning in aws also okay. that you need your own with own requirement with cpu and ram but we the aws is not providing based on that particular type so we can okay. demand them also oh okay customization okay uh, customization correct okay uh okay and the second thing is yes, uh, second thing is that while uh, giving key pair name uh, i saw you uh, in the presentation it was written special characters not allowed at but, the uh, rate at the rate exclamatory hash those will not work hyphen will work acha okay hyphen will work okay. without hyphen, hyphen also work. i can select right without oh. hyphen also you can do that at the rate exclamatory dollar sign percentage and star brackets those will not work oh okay okay got it okay, okay. thank yes, you chandra yeah hi ankit here we selected uh, windows uh, windows image as 2022 if you want to go with the older version means like you can go with that and, also uh Where it, uh, But where if AWS problem. is providing that one, you can select. That means if AWS is providing Chandra, you can select that particular type also. Yeah, but uh, okay. In earlier, I mean earlier when I am practicing, I saw in Red Hat seven and all. I am unable to see it. See so here, I here I am getting the list. that's what i'm saying if aws is providing then you can select if aws is not providing how you can select those things okay uh, mean okay. red hat instance red hat instance you are going to create it or uh, who is have to practice it we yeah, can practice those things also chandra it's not possible for me to show each and everything but yes how to create linux machine we'll learn in tomorrow session and i'm not using red hat i'm going to use amazon linux in tomorrow session Uh, okay. okay okay that all the, now all the means all the organizations are using red hat 7 red hat 7 only but when i am checking it red hat 7 is uh, not there see chandra let's take example you are buying you want to buy something from amazon.in but that product is not there in amazon can you buy no but uh, older but, versions it should be there right But they are not providing, Sandra. So how Because we can no, select if they are not providing us? Yeah, uh, means my my question is that uh, Red Hat nine and all no one using till now. So that's uh, still if okay, cloud okay. is not providing, Sandra, try to understand few things. Mm -hmm, it's not possible mm -hmm. which things they are not providing. We can select. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes, Masood. And one more thing. Okay, do you have any more questions? Yes, sir. Yes, continue. Uh, here in in Windows mission we generated uh, key with the with the pem pem dot pem file. Uh, Correct. After key generation, do we change that password? You can generate next time again. Generate password again. System will generate a new password for you. No, not system generated. our own password can we create it no we can't create okay. our own password yeah yeah thank you sir. okay okay let's move forward here and i'm going to show you some more things but uh, let's take example after your practice you don't need this particular ec2 machine anymore if you don't need this ec2 machine anymore what you can do you want to delete this particular ec2 machine so how we can delete this particular ec2 machine select the instance go to instance state and here we have option of terminate terminate means i am going to delete this particular 
EC2 machine. And it is impossible to recover once we terminate this EC2 machine. I'm just going to terminate and again click on the system is start shutting down right now and then in the end it is going to terminate this EC2 machine and it is impossible to recover once we terminate our EC2 machine. So for those things you can use backup or we have some other thing we can restrict our users also so by mistake no one can terminate our EC2 machine. So how to take a backup or how we can restrict our users all those things we are going to discuss in our upcoming session. Okay, yes, Akta, you can unmute. Yeah, uh, I was just trying to uh, uh, understand one thing, Ankit. Uh, like uh, in order to uh, get the password, we uploaded one of the template, right? So I missed that one somewhere, means uh, from where, uh, where we got that template and to get the password. Yes, template, you need to select your EC2 machine, click on connect. There we have an option to generate password. It's not possible to show you again because I have terminated the machine now. Okay, while well, I will be doing today, I will uh, look for that. Or yes. possibly I will go through this particular uh, recorded sessions once we receive the link. And uh, if I face any issue in case, then we'll ask you. Uh, uh, okay, With thank you. Screenshot. Sure, we'll do that. Okay. And make sure whenever you're going to email me, you're going to mention your batch number also. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Sure, we'll do that. And I believe uh, uh, the e email is uh, the, the one which we have at logiclabs.com. That, that is the one, right? Logiclabstech.com. I'm sharing yeah. my email ID again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yes, Sumit. Uh, I, uh, I have three questions actually. <clears throat> the first, like, as if now we are using free uh, AMIs. Mm -hmm. uh, do we use free AMIs in the live environment as well, like in products no. and companies? No. But yes, do thou, like, if, if your requirement is that particular AMI, let's say, example, you need to use 2022 version, but that one is coming under free tier. Definitely, you can use also. But if your client is having some other requirement, like some person is saying that they need to use some other version, so, but it's not coming under free tier. In that particular case, you need to use. All right. <clears throat> the second one is like when we created this machine, uh, there was an uh, option like in summary you were showing, right? There was mentioned as one. If we want to create multiple machines at same time, like in and with same configuration, can we do it in one go? Yes, correct. It is possible, but we are not doing with the help of the option which actually I'm showing you right now. There is an option called auto scaling with the help of that we are doing. Okay, how to use auto scaling we learn in upcoming session because that is the best way to create multiple machines, not at this way. Okay, and my last question is uh, the password that we created using this PEM key. Mm. So, do we need to save password like for all the Windows machines separately, or we can uh, create it like at no, every separately. Log for Windows, we need to create separately password. For Linux, it will be easy. For Windows, it needs to be separate password. So, like, for every time we have to create the key pair and we have to create a password. No, if you are creating I mean, multiple I mean, machines, if you are creating mm -hmm. multiple machines, Sumit, let's say you have created 10 mm -hmm. machines and all 10 machines have same key pair. Mm -hmm. So, you can generate only one time the password for single, single machine. Okay. 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 You don't need to generate multiple. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Venkat. Yeah. So uh, when we are creating the instances, I mean, the uh, resources, CPU, G, uh, memories, right? 
So was there any limit for the free user? Like, uh, so I wanted to create a Windows machine with uh, 100 GB of hard disk or 8 GB of RAM. Yeah. So is that LGB. possible? That is what I have shown you know, Venkat earlier, like T2 micro, the type which is coming under free tier. It means one CPU and one GB of that is free quota. And for each machine, th till 30 GB is coming under free quota. That is a maximum. Maximum okay. for free tier. Other than that, if you are using, definitely they'll charge for load. Okay, cool. Okay. And, and that uh, is, I, yeah. Yes. And one more doubt. So as a Unix administrator, suppose we have a past experience, Linux admin or AX admin. Mm. admin. So same, um, what are the related uh, services in AWS uh, related Unix like? No, there is no related service to Linux we have. We have Linux machines which we are going to create here. Okay. Like uh, network for network guys, it is a VPC like that, right? So like there is same no separate as... service we have for Linux administrator, but we are going to, because in, in real time, we are majorly using Linux machine rather than Windows machine. Yep. Okay, but I'm showing you both, but I might be, um, any of your client is using it Windows also. I'm going to show a few examples on Windows also, but till that time I have seen or I have worked for clients, they are only using Linux based software. Okay. Okay. So if you know Linux, it will be easy for you to work on Linux. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Venkat Shrikant. Uh, Ankit, I'm audible. Yes. Yeah, Ankit, in the real time scenario, uh, customers might be saying that, you know, uh, I want to launch my application in cloud, okay? Correct. Maybe around 10,000 instances. So, in that scenario, it is a responsibility of the architect to identify the RAM, CPU, hard disk, and OS, right? So, it is our how responsibility. Do you, yeah, how do we arrive at the estimation, like how much CPU it might require in real time? That is these many instances? So, do you have that's what we need uh, to discuss tools? with that's what we need to discuss with developers and client. Mm -hmm. And in the starting, what Venkat, what every client is using with very minimum CPU and RAM, every client is starting. Whenever their customer base is start increasing, after that we can increase CPU and RAM of our machines also. How to do that, we learn in upcoming session. That is called a scale up. Okay. 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 We can increase CPU and RAM in future also. Okay. But okay, initially, but... if they say that I need 100 instances or 1000 instances, so mm -hmm. you start up with some uh, like 10 percent, I mean, I don't know, I mean, how to arrive at that, but how many CPUs you so, create? Suppose if you ask for thousand instances, definitely no one. If you were to talk a small client, no no client want a thousand machine. If a big client, definitely they need a thousand machines also. But that is purely checking on with our monitoring tools. Mm -hmm. On daily basis, we have some monitoring tool. We can check how much traffic we are getting. If we are getting more traffic, we'll increase CPU and RAM for our machines also. Okay. okay. So with we'll monitoring tools, it is possible. We'll, we'll create some uh, <clears throat> virtual servers and then keep on increasing based on the traffic. Correct. So we'll, uh, but initially, there is no estimation kind of thing, like right? there is no tools to identify. No, no, there is no tools. No, there is no tools. That is just discussion with developers and client. Okay. 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 Based on the application which they are created. Thanks, Angit. Yeah. Yes, Junaid. Hi, good morning, <clears throat> Angit. Yes, Junaid. Angit, am I audible? Yes, Junaid. Uh, actually, I have a quick question. Mm. Uh, topics you have shared, uh, I mean, the topics we are Post you are content. covering, All right? They are in detail or uh, they are just overview? What do you think like, by seeing the course content? Yes, yes, yes. No, what do you think, Junaid? I'm just asking your opinion. What do you think? I think it's in a, it should be in details. Topic it, is in wise. Detail. it is in the details. Okay, right. Thanks. Yes, Radhika. Uh, yeah, hi. As uh, architect, uh, do we provide uh, EC2 missions to user or it will be some other team? Like we will no, only... We are the one. We, we, we even in our upcoming session, we learn about how to create users for our other team members also. For EC2 also, even for our AWS account also. 
okay like we will take only the requirement from the client like how many uh, instances they required and how much of gb like that correct and we can we are not providing our administrator user to developers okay. we'll create their separate users okay okay and in our upcoming session we'll learn about how we can create users in linux machine okay and uh, one more question uh we are creating a aws account for our learning purpose in right. organization perspect uh, the aws console will be different or a no, same, same 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 okay so some other uh, extra services uh, required by the client so it will be uh, the charge will be taken care by the company right everything yes, the bill billing is taken care by the company yeah and uh, when we are of, and first of every month the bill is going to be generated okay first of yeah uh, and one more question uh, we are creating a dns name for uh, connecting our uh, instance public from, yeah public dns uh, like mm. we are connecting from the public network so we are creating a public dns so Correct. as we are in a working environment it will be different the dns name dns can be same dns can be same but the network but, will be different mm. right no you can restrict to your own network also that is what i have told in previous earlier i saying that we'll discuss more thing about security group okay and uh, dns name username and password we have to share with the user correct okay and uh, every time the password will be changing as as you no. said right system is no. generating no password every time it is not whenever you want to reset a password that time okay. you can do that okay so with the same dns username and password uh, client can log in and they can work accordingly correct not client okay. developers developers okay okay all right thank you okay. yes power um, like as we are term, uh, using some terminologies called instances and uh, servers and what exactly instance meant like instance means ec2 machine ec2 machine is also called as instance okay yeah, it is mentioned as instance okay directly okay it's a, another name of ec2 machine instance it is also in our in our actually if i talk about in journal word it is called as virtual machines or virtual servers it is called as in EC, in amazon it is called as ec2 or you can call it instance in journal word it is called as virtual machine or virtual server okay okay yeah and okay and the one which we created it will be like a server and what might be the difference between the system and the server that like normal windows so, system which we are using and in in normal windows you can't install some things like if i want to create a web server like i want to create a website i can't create a website in my local machine okay in my windows 11 10 i can't do that but in the windows server i can do okay okay clear yep yep yes jagdish you can ask. good morning ankit ankit uh, in the real time environment uh, so they will create ec2 instance and delete as in no 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 real time will... no no we are not going to delete don't do this thing if anyone will delete the person definitely will lose his job no no my thing is that uh, you have to use and pay right you are saying that at the at the run time of any particular instance the i mean the developer can create the ec2 instance and finish no, his job and has... can delete no, it no no we are not terminating them definitely machines are required whatever we needed terminate mm -hmm. we are not doing in real time just here in our, our practice purpose we are terminate yeah but you see it's it's continuously running if if you create and if you leave it means it's continuously running you have to yes. pay for it right correct so that but means the ecc if, that is why we are not we are creating not machines manually we have an option called auto scaling with the help of that system is automatically creating our machine based on requirement and automatically delete our machine based on our requirement So we'll set some no, rules. I, I, hear. I hear that. What as a client, so the EC2 instance machine is been created and it's keep on running. 
Mm. You said we can use and pay for it, right? Correct. So that's our basic principle. It's a keep on running. So I yes. have to pay for it. So I don't want Definitely. to run it. So you are going to stop it. And again, no, when you, it if is you don't, needed, if you are to run it. That machine is having no use now. Yes. So, so for example, I have completed my work. For example, after ah, so 6 in PM, that case, you get terminated. No, for that particular day, your work is completed. Completely, your work is completed. That particular EC2 machine. There's a difference. Like for that particular day, your work is completed. Your work is completely finished. No, only per particular day is completed. Ah, so, so then I have you some, can, some then you can start jobs. running. Then you can mm -hmm. start running your machines. If you're scheduling, it means you have start running your machine. You can't terminate that machine. Okay, so you're telling uh, at the end we can stop that machine like regular. If you just want to stop, like. stop, stop. You can do that. We have option of stop. Okay. But okay. not terminate any time. Termination so in that particular case, you are not doing. And even in real time, we are not stopping mm -hmm. our machine. If you just we have completed for day particular day, we have completed our. Might be okay. you are not the one who is working, but might be other team members can be work. Okay, or okay. might be with that there's some other things are linked. You're not going to even stop your machines also. Okay. Yeah, okay. got it, Ankit. That's where I was thinking that it will be uh, paid for ever, ever, even we are not using. Got it. If you're stopping, you. then it is no payment for those things. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yes, Uday. Ankit, I had a, like the same doubt. I mean, uh, if we don't stop the mission, the hours will be counted, right? Then uh, yes. We lost the timing also. I mean, we are general users. I mean, we are not using it for, uh, I mean, in the real time. I mean, we are doing practicing. So, so that's that's why I said that after I practice, terminate your machines. If you terminate, uh, I think it will be get deleted totally. I yes, also... deleted. So you can create again. It is a again practice for you. Then. Okay. So okay, we for can't you, use for you, the same machine. Practice. No, you want because... to use, you can use same machine also. Okay. But, but I'm suggesting it terminate this machine because it is a quick recap for you. Okay. If we are middle of something, if we want to do it later part, I mean in the further sessions. Mm. So in that scenario, do we can stop for temporary? And... We don't require for AWS training. Whenever on every day, I'm going to create a new machine whenever I require. Okay. okay? We have to terminate it and we have to create the new one every time. Yes. Like uh, we can't shut down it for time being and we can't. No, if you want, you can do that also. There. It's up to your wish. My shut suggestion terminate. It. Shut down means stop. Stop instance we okay. have. My same. suggestion is to terminate machine. It's up to your wish. You want to continue the same machine, you can go with that also. For shadowing, per shadowing, we have to click on the stop instance. Yes, correct. Later, we can start the instance, then it will be get started. Correct. Thank you, Ankit. Okay. Yes, Kuldeep Modi, you can. Kuldeep Modi, are you able to hear me? Hello. Uh, Kuldeep Modi, before asking question, I need to one, tell you one thing. Once you raise your hand and you're lowering down your hand, what happens is you're coming in the last. I'm always following a formula called FIFO. First in, first out. So once you lower down your hand and then again raise your hand, you come in the last for me. So you're in the last right now for me. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry for, yeah, uh, so sorry for, once you raise your hand, wait for your turn. Yeah, uh, actually I was lost my connection uh, at that moment. Uh, you can ask your question. Yeah. Uh, it is the best practices to launching uh, uh, web, uh, virtual machines uh, or instances uh, without VPC or default VPC. Is that right now? You having default VPC? You have a default VPC. Okay. So is there any effect or not? No, there is no effect. You can use a default VPC right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. In our upcoming session, we learn about our own VPC. How we can create our own VPC also. Okay. Or. Uh, is the password is the same for the windows and every time. So what is the best? Till that time you are not going to reset the password will be same. Okay. So how we can store our password for the best practices or the, is there any tools or a services for the AWS or we can store in our local machine as a notepad? You can't password. store passwords anywhere. 
Okay, just just PEM file is for the login, and every time we are getting password with the Correct. with the password we can log in in machine. Is the process the same for the every Windows machine? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Venkat C. Yeah. Uh, so, if if I if I wanted to stop the instance, so was there any like a uh, uh, schedule stop like? Suppose after one hour, I wanted to stop the instance without my, uh, you know. Uh, it can be possible with the help of alarms. Yeah, that's right. So that we can save the time for that, right? So yeah. we can allow, we can schedule alarm. Okay. Yes, Balaji. Uh, see, it's uh, too early to ask this question. Like uh, in Kubernetes, we use pods and uh, clusters, right? Mm. Here also, uh, on the instances, we can create pods. Correct. And uh, how? What type of commands we use? Like we that use is, we learn in, in DevOps training. Okay. Okay, not in AWS training. You are going to discuss it. Okay. 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 Yes, Sunil Patel. Sunil Patil, you have already unmuted yourself. You can ask your question. Okay. Okay. So with this, I'm ending the session. In tomorrow's session, we'll learn about how we can create our Linux virtual machine. And if you have any question while practice, you can drop me an email with screenshot and make sure you're going to mention your action number also. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow.